I have here an object of art. It's a beautiful piece. It's a bronze. It's actually a coin. And the artist made a silicon imprint of his face and used that as a mold to produce this piece. The artist's name is Kasper Berger. He is one of the foremost Dutch sculptors of the present day. And this is probably one of the most personal pieces he has made. You can see an ear, a nose, the mouth. It's heavy. It's as if you're holding someone's face in your hand. That's quite scary, really. You should really have a look at it. Um, it's not often you will see something so personal and beautiful and precious. But for now, I'll put it away and we'll come back to it later. Traditionally, museums are the curators of our heritage. They guard what is most precious to our society and they make choices of what they deem to be most relevant to share with us, the audience. They do so in large designated buildings, seriously, studiously, and responsibly. Nothing wrong with that, you would say. But how many people would actually go to a museum? Well, each year more in the Netherlands, we are told. In 2013, in the Netherlands, a total of 23.2 million visits were paid to museums. In the Netherlands, we have 1,327 museums, of which 423 are registered in the official register of museums, that means they're professional museums. 58 of those, only 58 of those, attracted more than 100,000 visits. Attracted more than 100,000 visits. That's not a lot. And 15 museums attracted 35% of all visits. More than half of those 15 are in Amsterdam, and a large amount of their visitors are from abroad. Now, what does that mean? That's not rocket science. That basically means that most of our art and heritage is not seen by most of the people. It's simply not part of our lives. Furthermore, a very large part of our heritage is in museum storage and is not seen by anybody except a few curators. And the choices, what we see and what we don't see, are made by a very small group of people. So, that's an issue, I would say. Now, going back to Kasper Berger's coin, the it would be so nice if everything that I was talking about, you wouldn't hear that from me, but you would actually be able to do it yourself, to come up with it yourself. So, when I was talking about the weight, the texture, the intrinsic properties of this particular piece, wouldn't it be much nicer if you could feel it yourself and see it yourself and judge it for yourself and share that with others? Rather than to look at it from a distance and be told what to think. I propose a little revolution. We're all curators now. From now on, we'll take care of our heritage. We all have something special, valuable in our lives, and we all know the story that comes with it. Going forward, we just need to ask ourselves two questions. What is the story I would like to tell? 
And how can I reach as many people as possible with that story? Let's just accept that our heritage institutions and the good work they do cannot reach the point of a fully integrated heritage situation in our daily lives. And let's help that integration a little bit. So here are some examples that demonstrate that you can be much more creative with art and heritage and reach an entirely different group of people with that. Claire Toomey is a British artist who works mainly with ceramics. She's also one of the heroes of my philosophy. The essence of her work is that nothing lasts forever, and in her view, you need to be in the present, take full responsibility actively for your presence, and the audience is therefore always an integral part of her work. In 2006, in collaboration with Wedgwood, she placed 4,000 small birds made of typical jasper blue throughout the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. She wanted to highlight that collection and value are not just determined by museums and tradition. And indeed, within five hours, all the birds were stolen by members of the public. <laughs> this was indeed her plan, because the collection lives on in the homes of many, where they undoubtedly have pride of place, a trophy, you could say, as was the name of this most famous of Toomey's projects. In 2010, in the Nelson Atkins Museum in Kansas, Claire Toomey designed the installation forever. 1,345 of the museum's sandbag cup were displayed, and members of the audience were asked to take one home, provided they would sign a deed promising they would look after it forever. Over 10,000 people signed such a deed, showing that the responsibility of ownership for our heritage is one we all bear. A year earlier, I worked with Claire Toomey in the Zuiderzee Museum, where I was director at the time. The Zuiderzee Museum had a large amount of broken tiles in its collection, and it's a nat national collection, so that means that you, can't, you cannot throw it away, but one thing you know for sure is you're never going to use it and you're never going to show it. And you're not going to put it on display. So I wanted a project that would highlight these d dilemmas. Claire Toomey developed a project called Monument, a huge pile of broken tiles and pottery which still baffles visitors at the entrance of the museum. Objects without a particular value or significance suddenly, in a new context, got meaning and became precious. <laughs> Similarly, in a collaboration between the Zuiderzee Museum and W139, a modern art institute in Amsterdam, the Dutch artist Zorro Feigl designed three magnificent new objects of art using so-called orphans of the museum. Orphans of the museum are objects that normally would not leave storage and therefore would never be seen by anybody. He not only gave these items a new lease of life by putting them in a different context, he also made them into an installation rather than in distant objects of admiration. Two boats became a lighthouse, a set of ropes became a tempestuous sea, and a set of compasses lost their direction through the intervention of one single magnet. You see, if you discard some of the notions, the traditional notions of keeping and preserving heritage, 
you can come up with a much more dynamic and creative story, one which might reach many more people in a much more profound way. The same applies when you choose the location of your story on the basis of its content, rather than opting for the traditional structure of a museum building. Photographer Koos Breukel made portraits of the last remaining residents of the Valerius Clinic, a psychiatric institution in Amsterdam that was about to close. He displayed the photographs within the clinic, which was a stark reminder of the sorrow felt and of days gone by. Breukel's insistence on not specifying who had been a patient and who had been a member of staff showed one true thing, which is that we're all a bit mad. <laughs> the talking about that, about a little revolution, is one thing, but in order to change the world, you have to start by giving the right example. I just gave you a couple, and I'll give you one more. The last couple of months, I've been working on a concept for a new museum of language here in Leiden. Initially, the request was for a new building in which the story of the languages of the world would be told. I felt that right from the beginning that that would be a big mistake, because language, that story of, of that versatile, that powerful story, that one thing that links us all, that links all people, that makes us who we are, that defines us, that, that we use to communicate with each other, that story should not be locked away behind museum walls, that story should be there where people are, in the station, in the town hall, in the library, on the streets. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to erect a museum and we're going to do it in public space rather than behind the walls and the ticket office of a museum. And not only that, we're not going to use one or two, two curators to fill the museum. We're going to use you. We're going to use all the people that are interested and we're going to ask them to, to con contribute to the museum. Indeed, we're all curators. The message really is that Heritage should be all around us. The evolution of our cultural life is, not, is, is too important to be left in the hands of a few curators, however well-meaning and competent they are. Heritage is not a luxury. And we need the, the significance of heritage is determined by its visibility. You need to live it, you need to feel it. Not just on a Sunday afternoon visit to the museum, quick shop, coffee, back home in time for telly. So let's preserve our Rembrandts and let's preserve our Vermeers and let's not frown upon the great work our museums do. But at the same time, let's open our minds and let's see the opportunities and possibilities that arise when we make heritage just as part of our daily routine as eating or drinking, sleeping or breathing. Because imagine, imagine when that happens, when heritage is all around us and the story of heritage is part of us. This is Ed Rouché on the High Line in New York. Here, Edward Hopper, just of Bowery. Diego Rivera, a mural from 1931 on the Standard Hotel. And here is Washington crossing the Delaware just on 7th Avenue. Now, banknotes are a great way of communicating cultural icons. In this case, designer Robin Stam did the opposite. You know, the bridges on the, on the Euro notes, they're non-existent, they're fake, they're imaginary. Robin Stam made them a reality in Spijkenisse. <laughs> and here is Johan Hendrik van Masterbroek, his painting of the old harbor of Amsterdam on one of the most architectural icons of Rotterdam. And here again, 
by night. So, you're all curators. We're going to do things differently from now on. We're going back to Kasper Berger's coin, and I'm going to leave this with you in your capable hands. I'm going to give it to one of you. You can take it home, you can cherish it. And after a couple of weeks, you give it to someone else, and so on and so forth. There's a couple of things you have to consider. Establish a community. Make sure that there is someone you can hand it over to. Take about 14 days to keep it, to cherish it, respect it as, it, as if it were your own. Create a new context with it. Take it away on holiday and photograph it in Rome's Pantheon. Give it to your children and video them at school and how they respond to it and how they interact with it. Make a drawing of what you think the artist looked like. Give it a new context, give it a new meaning. Publish that. Use on the social media hashtag we curators and come back next year to TED X Leiden and share your experiences. Who can I give this to? Yeah? Here you are. Good luck with it. So, on that note, I thank you very much for listening. You're all curators now.